name is Marn and uh, I'm soon 22 years old. Um, I'm from a non-Christian family, or they're not atheists, but they're not like Christian either. So um, when I was brought up, I was, yeah, raised like a normal girl, normal parents, nothing special, uh, but not, not religiously. Um, um, I haven't really had any religious um, how can I say upbring upbringing uh, at all from my parents. Uh, they have never talked to me about God, I think. Uh, it was mostly my grandma who was kind of religious uh, or they were religious enough to sing bed bedtime, not stories, but they were telling me stories about just, how can I say, light Christianity, like they were talking uh, uh, kind of not talking, but they were saying kind of duas, I don't know how to, it's like a prayer, it's like songs, like good night songs, uh, which you thank God when you were singing them. Uh, but that's really all. My, my uncle is uh, somehow religious, but he has never talked to me about religion too much either. It's just normal, not very much practicing, but just normal. Uh, well, I have always believed in God. Uh, regardless of my parents or family or friends, I always have believed that there was something higher than just being a normal human being and doing nothing with your life. Uh, but I just never had that um, connection with with type of God or religion that was. Uh, but I always had like this feeling that there is something, like when something was bad, I used to kind of fold my hands and pray because that was what I thought I was supposed to do. Like that was... The only thing that I knew how to do, like, uh, uh, so I started, I think I started going to church when I was maybe f 15, 16 years old, because I felt that I needed to do something. Uh, but that was kind of, it was around the confirmation time, I think. Um, and for a while before then, I had been searching for a religion, something. And I call myself a Christian because uh, that was the only thing I really knew about. Um, and I started to go into church uh, and I went almost every week um, until I had my confirmation. Uh, when I did have my confirmation, I tried to go a lot to the church. So I went like two or three times a week and I... Um, also try to like practice, uh, I try to like kind of become like a deeply Christian because I had to find something. Uh, and I tried, I asked a lot of questions and kind of wanted to do something, but I didn't find what I was looking for in normal, the Norwegian type of Christianity. Uh, so I tried to go to another church, a uh, Catholic church, try to search around there, but. I didn't really find my religion in a way. Um, I think what was driving me towards like finding God or religion, I I don't know. It's just it's just a feeling that you know there is something there, something that has to have created everything. I mean, you can't just everything around you. If you look at it, I just felt there was something. I it's. I think it's a feeling I can't really describe because it's uh, it has just been there. It was just a need, an urge. My my family used to nag me about it, like you're going to church, you, church, you believe in God. Why? What's the point of that? Media was kind of a big um, uh, how can I say a big factor to why I didn't like Islam because it was so so much bad about it in the media. I didn't think it was possible to follow a religion which is all, only war and bad people, suicide bombings and things like that. And also the people that I saw that were Muslims were behaving bad. So I thought, if that's Islam, I cannot compare to that. I, I don't want to relate to that in any way. I think it was difficult for me to kind of try to learn about Islam, which I just associated with bad things. I have never been able to believe that Jesus is God's son. 
I have always thought that's impossible. I mean, he can't have a son if he's God, because he has to be unique and one of a kind, and you can't have a son because it just seems unjustified to God. So after I realized that, I had to kind of search for myself, within myself, to see if this is something I can stand for, if this is something I can believe in. And when I searched inside Islam, this was actually the first thing that I realized that I can stand for. And this is the first thing that I really do believe in. And when I found out that, I just, I couldn't help it. I, I had to become a Muslim. Uh, when I converted, and there was like a time period when I met some good people who were very nice to me, uh, who knew that I was interested in Islam. So there were also some of the people that I used to talk about Islam with. Um, I was, I had decided that I did want to convert, but I just, I didn't know how, and I was not quite, quite ready yet. So I um, started following them where they went. It was um, a religious uh, kind of group uh, who had uh, some um, events for non-Muslims and Muslims as well, of course, uh, but it was mainly for non-Muslims. Um, I followed a friend there once, um, which I've known for many years, and uh, she told me that, take your time, don't, don't convert if you don't like, and you don't have to do this. I said, no, no, I, I'm not going to convert today. I don't want to convert today. This is not my day. At this event, there was a guy who was talking about how non-Muslims are going to hell regardless of, like, even if they behave like extremely good or anything, you're just, you're doomed. And if you want to convert, you have to convert as fast as possible because that's the only way. And I thought that I was not ready to convert because I didn't kind of, I had the feeling about Islam is the right thing. But still, I mean, there has to be a time for you when you feel like this is my thing, this is something I need to do for myself. They kind of like ambushed me in a way. Um, they like talk to me so much that you have to do it. You have to be an inspiration to others. You have to convert because you have to show others that uh, Islam is the right way and you have, to, you have to do this. And I said, no, I don't have to do it. I want to do it, but not this way, not in this kind of way. Because um, if I wanted to convert, I wanted to have an imam there and have like, some of my closest friends or something, just because it was for myself, it was not for anyone else. But they uh, said that uh, you cannot do that. You have to show the others that you convert or else it is not like a valid conversion. And I, I knew that that was not right because I had been asking some friends about that earlier. And they said that you can, you, you don't have to have so many people there. It's not like something you have to do. It's between, it's, it's between you and God. So I thought that, okay, then I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this today. But there was, then there was a, a Norwegian convert, actually, um, a grown woman who came to me and she said, you don't know what you're doing to those people who are sitting here they are just waiting for someone to convert. They are waiting to see this. This is what they came for. And I said, but they didn't come for me. They come, came because they wanted to listen to the speaker. They came here because they wanted to by themselves. They didn't know that I was going to convert today because I didn't plan that I was going to convert today. And they say, no, but still, maybe there are someone here, sitting here just waiting for someone to convert so that they can kind of be inspired to keep on practicing Islam. Maybe they're supposed to give up, but because of you, because you convert, maybe they don't give up. And I sat there and I thought about it and I didn't really want to do it because it felt wrong. But there were so many people that I didn't know and also people that I did know who came to me and started like kind of nagging. Like, come on, you have to do it. Come on, please, come on. You, 
why not? Why not? What is stopping you? You don't want to become a Muslim? You don't think Islam is right? And I thought that, I, I thought it was right, but not like that. So the agreement was that I was supposed to do it with just an imam by myself and I think two or three others. And so then I said, okay, fine, I can do it. Um, and I thought I was going to do it alone with that imam. And suddenly <laughs> the speaker who was speaking on the stage erased, uh, he raised from his chair and he said, there is a sister here, here who wants to convert. And I thought there was someone else because that was not what I was supposed to do. So this man, he said that the sister is sitting there and uh, can some sisters show her where she's gonna go? And I, th and I thought, okay, maybe they're gonna take me to another room. So I raised uh, from my chair and, and went with two girls but they followed me to a microphone on a kind of small stage on the top of the, it's like a girl section. And I didn't know what to do. I felt so surprised. I mean, this was not the agreement that we had. Um, so I felt very surprised and I didn't know what to do because I felt so kind of caught up in a corner, a corner I think. I mean, it was just like, here, there you go. Come on, convert. And I just, I felt that I had to do it because I felt that it was like something that they were kind of, that was the whole point of the entire thing, that they wanted someone to convert on that stand, just to like, not for my sake, but for their sake. I felt that they needed to have that, um, they needed one more convert in their convert bank. So after I converted, like said the Shahada, um, everyone was hugging me and they gave me like a little box of books and such. And after that, uh, it was over. Uh, there was a period of time after that where so many people like just contacted me randomly. People I have never heard about, people I've never seen contacted me and like, they want to be my friend just because I was a convert. I mean, that's wrong. Um, and they took me to the mosque. Uh, it's a mosque in the city. And they placed me in kind of a course, like a convert course. Um, and I went to this class and, um, but I mean, with some other girls also who converted recently in that time. Um, and they were like teaching you how to be a Muslim. And they told you so many things that you had to give up, like on that day. You had to give up like, um, for example, your family, not like giving them up totally, but they said that they are not Muslims, so you have to make them Muslims or you cannot live with them. That's that. And I said, yeah, but still they're my family. Family is important in Islam. So I cannot leave my family. They said, no, but if they're not Muslims, you cannot live with them either. And when I, after a while, started to realize that a lot of things they told me was too extreme. It was like they practically want you to give up everything else than just this, like the things they kind of focus about. And uh, I mean, sure, you have to live a certain way when you're Muslim, but still Islam is something that you can, it's like, it's not just a religion, it's a lifestyle. You cannot just give up everything else. You have to live your life like a normal human being. The people that I went with in the beginning, um, there were a lot of Wahhabis and Salafis. I didn't know the term Salafi or Wahhabi when I was going there in the beginning. Um, because first I thought that this was the way Islam was supposed to be. Because that was the only thing I was kind of able to learn. Um, they didn't really want to tell me about any other kind of sects in Islam because they just, uh, everything else is wrong. So because there were so many people in that mosque telling me that this is the only right thing, I, in the beginning, I felt that this 